Review code provided by Screenwave Media. After more than six years, the exhilarating fighting series that are alive has finally returned with its sixth installment. Compared to its contemporaries, DOA has always been known for having fast-paced combat, easy-to-pick controls, and being over-the-top insane. And while there have been some advancements given the time gap between the last game, some of the series' charms seem to be running thin. Dead or Alive 6 has a story mode just like its predecessor. Each cutscene in the game is fully animated, which is great to some other games in the genre that opt to use still images with some occasional voiceover. Despite the presentation, the story itself is atrocious. The story mode is contextualized by a grid-like map with chapters to choose from. Each chapter is comprised of a short 20-second cutscene and the occasional one-round match. Players can choose whatever chapter they want to play despite the chronological order of events. The problem is, while the key storyline featuring the three ninja, Hayate, Kasumi, and Ayane, is straightforward, others are not. More than often, finishing a chapter with one character will unlock another, but navigating through the cumbersome menu UI proves to be tedious. Either the menu is too zoomed in to see the next playable chapter, or too zoomed out to see what the heck is going on. Combined between the lengthy loading time between each fight only makes the pacing even worse. As for the story itself, while the series is known for its ridiculous antics, there has always been an underlying theme to connect everything together. Every story path feels fragmented, and even the absurd so bad it's good comedy doesn't hit the mark. You know what's really funny? The Dead or Alive tournament, you know, the namesake of the whole franchise, is barely a footnote in the entire story mode, it's ridiculous! Perhaps the most unfortunate aspect is the lip-syncing with the English dub. I'm gonna say, this is perhaps some of the worst in recent memory. We need to make sure her power is not misused. Can I entrust this to you? The UA5 story at least played events in a linear fashion to give the entire narrative not just better cohesion, but also a sense of grandeur. But the UA6 little vignettes leave a lot to be desired. Not to mention, completing it doesn't grant any rewards whatsoever. Thankfully, other modes fare much better than the lackluster story. DOA Quest is essentially a mission mode designed to help players better understand the mechanics of the game. Each mission has three goals, from an easy one to just winning a fight, to harder ones like performing a series of counters. There are over 100 different challenges, and accomplishing tasks nets currency coins that can be used to buy costumes and accessories. Dead or Alive sticks to the classic triangle system it used for years. Strikes are good against throws, holes are good against strikes, and throws are good against holds. While the series stuck to the traditional system for years, there are some new mechanics introduced this time around. Using the newly appointed special button can initiate a fatal rush. Pressing it in succession will result in a devastating combo that can easily stun enemies. The button also helps with sidestepping, not only press it either up and down to avoid a straight line of attacks, but it can be linked to another attack while dodging. The biggest addition lies within the new break meter. The meter is divided into two segments, and it can be used in a couple of ways. Break holes are special counters that use one segment of the meter. Those can interrupt opponents no matter the stance, like regular counters. Break blows are offensive attacks that use two segments of the meter. If they land, characters will perform a devastating cinematic attack that inflicts a lot of damage. You can also link those with a fatal rush if you have enough energy in your meter. Knowing when to use the new mechanics adds a new layer of strategy and is easily the biggest improvement to the series' combat since, well, ever. In addition, the game's tutorials offer a lot of guidance to both newcomers and veterans of the franchise. Not only the introductory tutorial helps understanding the new mechanics, but each character has their own command training and combo challenge. In addition, in DOA quest mode, a handy tutorial will show up in case a failure occurs with one of the tasks, and that's a really neat feature. Learning the new mechanics and refining fighting skills through the various tutorial modes can prove valuable while challenging others online. However, at launch, the online experience of Dead or Alive 6 feels rather gimped. 
the only option available is ranked matches, and there are no lobbies to speak of, especially when you can't even invite a friend over to play online. Hopefully Koei Tecmo will add more matchmaking options in the near future. Thankfully, the actual online experience is decent. Well, I have experienced some slowdowns, as long as I was playing with someone with great connection, very little issues occurred. Considering how the single player content is rather limited, it's a shame that the online component is rather lacking. Local Versus is available, which is of course awesome, but it lacks traditional modes like team or tag battles, and that's a huge shame. But that doesn't even compare to how poorly unlocking additional content handles. Unlocking new outfits, especially for the female fighters, has given players many reasons to play extensively. Previous games allowed simply playing through the arcade mode to unlock each costume, but the OA6 goes for a more cumbersome approach. Each outfit is comprised of 100 to 1000 pattern points that players can receive while playing the game. Unfortunately, there are a couple of major issues with this system. The first is that gaining points is a tedious process. DOA quest nets the most points if every task is completed, but even then the amount of missions are finite. The other way to gain points is by playing the arcade mode or online. But after winning a measly 20 pattern points where some costumes go upwards to 1000, is definitely a little disheartening. The second is the fact that those points are applied at complete random. If you want to buy an extra outfit for only Kasumi because she's your main character, it's impossible since the game allocates the points to a random character. It's even worse to win 500 pattern points only to see it apply to a costume that only costs 100. That means that 400 pattern points are pretty much in limbo. In addition, after getting the necessary points, players still have to use gold coins to buy the actual outfit. Now, granted, the amount of gold coins given after completing missions is pretty satisfactory, but it's baffling why unlocking items could have been more streamlined. And that is without including the fact that there's an outrageous 92.99 season pass that unlocks the Lux costume and only a couple of characters. Despite the time gap, Dead or Alive 6 doesn't look all that different than its predecessor. Character models still look as great as ever, especially the female ladies with their <laughs> ample bounce physics. The most notable change is how clothes go through wear and tear throughout a fight. It's even more rewarding after a break blow, where accessories shatter upon an impact. The environments, however, seem to have taken a step back since the last game. Details are scarce, colors are far muted, and even the multi-layered stages the series is known for are few and far in between. Sure, there's the occasional moment where knocking an opponent to a giant egg reveals an anchor pterodactyl that flings them back, but compared to previous entries, the stages are just bland and forgettable. For the huge step forward that Dead or Alive 6 took with its gameplay, it has taken a step back in every other category. Lifeless story mode, bland stages, tedious unlocking method, and limited online interface hurts it in the grand scheme. Despite a lot of omissions, this still remains a fun fighting game to play with friends, and there is still hope that Koei Tecmo will add features in the near future. How much will that cost is a whole other story. Thank you very much for watching guys, and until the next time, take care. <laughs>